Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about why you should probably be using an iPod 20 years on from its original launch date. Just before we jump into it, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. Using an iPod in 2024 might seem outdated and a little bit odd, but it does have unique advantages. The first reason is distraction-free listening. Unlike phones or computers, iPods are focused purely on music, which I find helps me stay in the moment instead of finding myself scrolling endlessly on social media or being distracted by notifications. I just get to enjoy the music by itself. Next, we have nostalgic value. For many people, iPods carry a substantial amount of nostalgic value from the early digital music era. They're an important history for many users, including myself, and I find that even without listening to my iPod on a daily basis, having it lying around does just put a smile on my face when I see it sitting in the corner. It's also generally just a really nice gimmick to have lying around to show other people, whether that's your grandma or your best friend, it doesn't matter. It's still really cool to be able to show people that you've worked on something, you've restored it to its full condition. Right, next we have battery life. Without technology like internet or Bluetooth, you can find that iPods literally last for days of constant music playback and, of course, brick gameplay. I can just chuck mine inside my bag without having to worry whether or not I need to bring a charger or a battery pack like you need to with most phones these days. I mean, I can't even get a full day out of an iPhone 13, so I think it's great not having to worry about my battery life when I go on holiday, when I go on a plane. And let's be real, if you're going on a plane, you don't even need internet anyway. You're just gonna be staring at that flight map for 16 hours. However, that brings me on to our next point durability. All the iPod Classic models are built to last and you can see that many have stood the test of time. All you need to do is look at eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Vinted. There is no constant fear of breaking a screen or having to have a screen protector on or a case because you already have chips, dents, scratches everywhere all over it. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't need to look perfect or be perfect because that's half the fun is being able to chuck it around. I enjoy being able to keep it in my pocket when I'm outside doing some work without fear of damaging it, but one thing to note is that I flash mod all of mine, so hard drive iPod users may find that mileage varies in that respect when it comes to chucking around a hard drive, that doesn't tend to go so well. The next thing is repairability and modability. An iPod is probably one of the simplest repair jobs that literally anyone could do. I'd actually be very hard pressed to think of something easier to work on other than maybe desktop computer. You can customise it to become your own and this is essentially what my channel was previously based around. Feel free to go ahead and check it out if you uh, want some inspiration for a new project or just if you're bored. Repairing an old device like an iPod actually is an excellent thing to do for the environment as well because it gives it a second life, reduces environmental impact of just chucking away an old device and adding to landfill. Because let's be real, there's nothing wrong with them, they, they can definitely still be used in this day and age. So yeah, there are plenty of reasons to own and use an iPod in 2024. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because it does really, really help. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.